Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a little known but a quick and brilliant victorious game played by the 11th world chess champion Robert James Fischer. In this game Fischer's opponent is Mongolian champion Sharaf Purevzhav and the game was played in 1962 at Varna Chess Olympiad. Fischer was playing with the white pieces opened up with e4 and Purevzhav responded with Sicilian defense c5, knight f3 d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3 and g6. Black goes for dragon variation which usually leads to sharp and double-edged positions, bishop e3, bishop g7, f3, knight c6, queen d2, Fischer is preparing castling queenside, Black castles king side, but first we have bishop c4. So Fischer is choosing Yugoslav attack with bishop c4. Another popular alternative is castling queen side straight away. But the idea of bishop c4 is that this is not allowing Black to go for d5 advancement. Knight d7 by Purevzhav, which is not a popular move. Occupying the d7 square with the bishop is the main move. But in our game we have the so-called Sosonko variation, knight d7. The idea of playing knight d7 is that this kingside knight is hurrying to support the queenside knight and later after bishop takes c4, black will recapture on c4 with the other knight, thus getting a powerful attacking knight on c4. Here Fischer castled queenside knight b6, bishop b3, knight a5, and queen d3, Fischer is not allowing knight c4, which could allow black to get rid of white's dark squared bishop as well, bishop d7, and here we go, h4 is on the board. White's idea is simple, to open up the h file, exchange the dark square bishops, and checkmate black king, that's how it goes. By the way, here I want to bring a small reference from Fischer's book My 60 Memorable Games. Here is what Fischer writes about dragon variation. White's attack almost plays itself. Weak players even beat grandmasters with it. I was thumped through several issues of Shahmat Nebuledin when the Yugoslav attack was making its debut and found the ratio was something like 9 wins out of 10 in white's favor. Will black succeed in reinforcing the variation? Time will tell. Well, despite the fact that in theory all this looks very easy, but I have to tell you that at least I know one game where Fisher is losing with the white pieces when facing dragon variation. Probably we should cover that game as well, but meanwhile let's proceed with our game. So in our game we have rook c8 and h5, knight b c4, h takes g6 and h takes g6. Well, in here recapturing with the f pawn is better. Later if needed, black can support the pawn on h7 with a move like rook f7, but in our game we have h takes g6. Bishop h6, standard idea when playing against dragon variation. After the exchange of dark squared bishops, black king will be defenseless. e6, and after f4 we have e5. Well, instead of playing e6, first going for e5 straight away is better. If bishop takes g7, then king takes g7, if knight e2, then queen b6, and still things remain unclear. We have a very sharp double-edged position, but though I have to tell you that the position still in white's favor. But in our game after bishop h6 we first see e6 and after f4, the idea of f4 is to play queen h3, we have e5. Seeing that threat, black is opening up the light squared bishop's diagonal, controlling the h3 square, but it was in here that Fischer landed a heavy punch and played knight f5. Right now the bishop is hanging, if you play a move like g takes f5, then simply queen g3 and the game is over. If queen g6 then knight e7 is winning. That's why after knight f5 black captured on f5 with the bishop and we have e takes f5, knight takes b2, Already I have to tell you that black's position is totally lost, but 
Black Goose, for a tricky combination, is sacrificing his knight with the idea of exploiting the weakness of the long diagonal, but Sharov Purevzhov overlooked Fischer's brilliant move. Now, look, by going for e4, Black's idea is that if queen takes e4, then bishop takes c3, but Purevzhov overlooked Fischer's queen sacrifice and Instead of touching his queen, Fischer played bishop takes g7. The idea is simple. If you accept the queen sacrifice and play a move like e takes d3, then f6 is coming and checkmate is imminent. That's why after bishop takes g7, black recaptured on g7 with his king, but after knight takes e4, black resigned because Black has a piece down and also white's attack is simply irresistible and we have a resignation. Another impressive and instructive game by the legend Bobby Fischer, which I hope that you enjoyed greatly. In the end, a puzzle for you, where the task is to find the winning line for white. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care!